Hi again, uh, here we are to continue talking about JavaScript. Um, in the last example, we talked about get element by ID and did a few things with that. Let's try and make something a, just a little bit more practical, nothing super complicated, um, but let's do a little more with our JavaScript. Again, I'm going to write the JavaScript into the script tag here so we can easily compare it with the contents of the body tag. Okay? And again, this could have been written in an external file and it would have worked just the same. Okay? So what are we going to do this time? I'm going to delete all this, and I'm going to change this thing. I'm going to leave the button there and leave the title here. And what I want to do is I want to create a timer. So imagine that the timer here, you know, it counts down. Like we'll have a start button. You'll click the button. It'll start the timer running, and then the timer will count in seconds. One, two, three, four, right? Um, and then maybe we'll have a stop button too, okay? So uh, let's get started, right? So uh, what are we going to do? Well, first of all, let's get a reference to our button again. Var, you know, uh, button equals um, document dot get element by ID. And what I want to do is I want to get my button. Okay, so now we've got our reference to our button. We need um, a reference to this thing that's going to display the um, the time. So we'll say document dot get element by ID title. Okay, so now we've got those right. And then uh, maybe we'll need a um, uh, we're going to create a timer, right? So let's do let's do the timer really quick. So we'll need a reference to the timer, right? And uh, the timer works like this. What we're going to do is we're going to say um, uh, set interval, okay? And set interval takes um, two parameters. One of them is a function. And again, I'll write it in this form where I put the function directly in here, an anonymous function or a closure, right? And so that's our first parameter. And then I'll put a comma here and I'll say how many milliseconds between each interval. So what does set interval do? Well, set interval basically executes this function each interval. So an interval is set in milliseconds. So every thousand milliseconds, it, you know, in my case here, right, the number here is a thousand. So every thousand milliseconds, um, set interval is going to execute this function right here, okay? So I'll put a return between the two curly braces there, and that way I can write my code here. So that looks a little weird, but that's very JavaScript, okay, code-wise. Okay, so I got my I got my my interval here, right? And then I can say, you know, console. We'll use the console for a moment here just to test this, and we'll say interval there, okay? All right, so we'll just print this message out, right? And then we'll go to the browser. I'll inspect it. You know, right click and open up the inspector, go to the console, refresh, and then it says interval two, three, and every second it's counting, right? So there's six, seven, eight, right? Okay. Um, so it's just going to keep doing that forever, right? Okay. Well, what if we want to keep track of the time? What if I say time equals zero? And then what I want to do here is I want to say, you know, time plus equals one, or, you know, in JavaScript, we could just do plus plus one, right? Um, and then maybe over here, instead of saying interval, I want to say interval colon plus the time. Like that, right? So we'll save that. So now every, every interval, so every thousand milliseconds, we should add one to the time and then log the time to the output window, okay? So there's one, two, three, four, five, right? So it's just going to keep going now. Um, so there you go. Now, here's a little note about set interval, right? Set interval returns a, a reference to the interval. It's, it's really just like a number, right? It's just like, okay, interval number one. And then if you did it again, it would say interval. Here's a, a number two to say that you're you're using interval number two, right? And so in order to clear the interval or stop the interval, we have to use clear interval, and we have to say the ID number of the interval, okay? So that means that we need to save the interval, right? So what we'll do is we'll say, you know, like var, you know, my interval 
equals set interval. And then later down here, you could say clear interval. Oops. Uh, right? And then you could say my interval, right? And we could clear it. Now, in this case, it's not going to do anything because we would make the interval and then immediately clear it so it would never run. But this is what we want to do when we create our stop button, right? So our run button, when it starts the timer, it'll want to do this and save the interval. And then our stop button will want to do this to stop the interval, right? So let's do this. Let's declare a variable here called my interval and you know it doesn't even have to have a value right we can just JavaScript is like that right we can just declare a variable right and then um, what we're gonna do is we're going to um, create a, a listener for the button now because clicking this button is going to start the, um, the the timer running right so what we'll do is we'll say um, you know button dot add event listener will be listening for a click event and then this is the function that will be executed when you click the button we'll include the event object we don't need it yet maybe we'll do something with that later and now when you click the button the code is going to happen here so what we want to do is I'm going to move this into the button code here so inside this function I've got set interval and now I want to save the interval. So I'm going to say my interval equals set interval. So now when you click the button, right, we're going to create an interval and the inter set interval method is going to return a reference to the interval here. And then our interval is just going to run and every 1,000 milliseconds it's going to, uh, you know, update the time in the console. And so maybe instead of updating the time in the console, why don't we send it to the title here? So what we'll do is we'll say title dot inner html equals and then uh, we could just put the time in there how about that right okay and then you know we you know essentially inner html is, is probably a string and you know this is a number but you know what that's okay if you have something that should be a string and you assign a number to it then you know the browser or javascript just converts it to a string and and everything's okay okay um Let's get rid of this clear interval just for the moment, and we'll use that. We'll have to make another button to stop, maybe, right? So let's save all that, and then go back to the browser here and test our code. So uh, nothing happens now, but when I click the test button, my counter starts running, right? And there it's it's running. Now it's going to run forever, right, until we add a stop button, okay? So um, why don't you try to add the stop button on your own, okay? and um, see if you can do that. That's kind of a challenge for you, right? And then I'll include another video and then maybe cover that and some other ideas in the next video, but you try that on your own, okay? So anyway, thanks for watching and good luck.